There's a magical moment early in the morning between the hazy echoes of dreams and crisp consciousness of daylight. A temporary moment of stillness in an otherwise bustling city center. Friends, still stirring from the fog of sleep, sit down with the first brewed coffee of the morning and greet each other. Coffee Cup Sessions is a journal of these moments, capturing these electrosonic conversations. Some days the dreamlike shroud of slumber is more difficult to shake than others. Some days are happy celebrations of life, while others are the dull, monotonous plodding on of time and routine. But the journal records these fleeting moments as conversations in the language of electronic music over minutes and over months. At 7 a.m., about once a month, for the last two years, these friends have met at the same coffee shop in Ann Arbor, Michigan. They sit at the same seats at the same table and drink the same coffee. What changes over time are the topics of conversation. Um, hi, my name is Jason, and uh, I'm one half of our, our duo here. And um, I've been playing electronic music probably since about 1999, 2000, and playing with Joe for almost equally as long. And uh, during college and right after college for a good number of mm -hmm. years, um, you know, we performed a lot, mm -hmm. yep. you know. And uh, then life kind of struck in, you know, we both got married, we both started families, jobs, school, it all kind of started adding up and kind of music kind of had to drop away. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in brief, you know, we, a couple of years ago, decided we wanted to get back together and start playing again. So we kind of started up the coffee cup sessions. Great. So, Joe, what did that look like as you started getting back together and started working on music again? So at first we had a few failed attempts where we tried to do things like online, like file deposits, where we would, I'd send him some samples and he'd play with them and then send them back, that kind of thing. But that usually fizzled out pretty quickly. I think it's mostly because it was asynchronous and usually a lot of our stuff was really um, in the moment and conversational and we were really, you know, playing off of each other a lot. And so those the live aspect of that was just non-existent for that. Mm -hmm. And so um, almost out of desperation, we just thought, well, let's just try meet up at a coffee shop, It'd be 7 a.m., it's before work, so we're both free, okay, and whatever happens, happens. I'll, you know, you bring an iPad and I'll bring a sampler and we'll just see what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't even record it. I, and I don't know if we even really made any music the first time. <laughs> probably not. Just trying to figure out how mix, yeah. mixing together yeah, was probably right. the hardest thing that we did right off the bat. Yeah, I had to dust the, the sampler off and remember how to twiddle the knobs and everything. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so that's a pretty unique thing. So set the scene for us in terms of what a typical session looks like. Yeah, I think we both show up uh, 7 a.m. at a coffee shop. Uh, we've got our favorite one now. Um, yeah. We, we kind of bounced around a few. We found one that's great. It's got a good, nice surface with uh, lots of outlets in there. And, um, it's uh, not too loud, and it's not too heavily trafficked. So we get in, and we set up, have a little bit of conversation, drink some coffee, have you know a muffin or something, and start playing. And usually we get about half hour, 45 minutes of good playing in, and then we wrap up and, and head out. And then from there, we kind of, later on, we'll listen to it and see if, if there's anything useful um, or good. Then we'll post it to SoundCloud. Um, if not, we'll just chuck it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think sometimes we've, we've posted whole sets and we've posted just like, you know, this was a good five minutes out of what we did. Mm -hmm. Sure. Worth, you know, something listenable. Sure. Yeah. Pulling excerpts yeah. Yeah. From, that, from that little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it's got to be interesting, uh, especially f maybe for other people that are in that environment, uh, seeing musicians with all of that stuff set up because it's pretty typical to see a couple people with laptops in a, in a cafe but not necessarily with uh, with musical instruments so mm -hmm. um, what are some of the what are some of the things that you've brought out in terms of the actual tools that you're using to play mm -hmm. sure um, I'll start uh, so for the most part when I got back into this you know because it had been a number of years you know most of my gear came from was the last stuff that I bought like in, you know, 2005 or 2006. So it was a lot of sampler based, um, a lot of stuff that just wasn't portable really. Back then people weren't doing really portable things or building portable things. Um, so I had to think, what could I do? And uh, I went the route of the iPad um, and it allowed me to explore a lot of the apps that were on there. I found my favorite app um, to play with, uh, which has been the sampler app, the one that doesn't have an E yeah. at the end of it. Yeah. Really, really fun mm -hmm. one. I like that. Um, 
So for the most part of our recordings, I'm using that. You know, generally the night before, um, maybe a day before, sometimes a couple hours before, I'm putting together all my samples onto that that I'm going to bring to our session there that day. Mm -hmm. um, most recently, though, I've started um, and saying, you know what, I kind of want to put the computer aspect aside and get a little bit more physical. So I've brought in a uh, thumb piano with a contact microphone into a, a digital delay guitar pedal with a pitch shifter on it. And then I brought out one of my port one of my samplers, which is pretty kind of portable, um, the Yamaha SU200, which allows me to, to do an audio in with some effects as well as play samples on it. And uh, it's a little setup. It only takes up about this much space in front of me, and I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I, I started with uh, with a sampler. It's an old Korg sampler, and um, quickly I, I kind of swapped that out for a laptop. And for a very long time, I just used a laptop with Apple and Live on it, and played around with stuff, little loops and things like that. And um, I would make a lot of stuff at home with a lot of outboard gear and so forth, um, a lot of physical, tactile things. Um, but then I would just bring the laptop with me. But lately I've had this more portable Eurorack system that I've built up that um, I've incorporated with the laptop. So I've got the laptop and the rack and um, the mad scientist looking lot, you know, wires and so forth. So it does look a little different now <laughs> at the coffee shop. And luckily there's not too many patrons at the time. So, sure. so we don't get too many weird eyeballs, uh, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. We're definitely the only people with musical gear at that time in the morning there. I think yeah. so, yes. I can guarantee <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. So one mm -hmm. of the things I think that's unique about uh, this approach is that you are uh, bringing musical instruments in and and um, and doing this in a very public place, but you're creating this very sort of private thing that only you're hearing, right? Mm -hmm. So what has that experience been like? And I never really gave that much thought until we started making this video, and I'd seen um, the, the one of the cameras that we shot with, um, and I saw the the audio and the video of it um, was just the, the the coffee shop, and it. And it looked really funny because I always thought of it in our world with the headphones and and the music and getting you know into it and everything and, and just never gave a thought to it of outside of our view and for a second there I saw whoa you know it's the coffee machine in the background and the the you know the blues music or something that was playing and the people talking in the background and and it looked just so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. what we were doing was absurd. Here we are, almost. just like <laughs> yeah. bouncing, listening to the music, <laughs> yeah. twiddling knobs to our in our own little world. Yeah. But I mean, it, it's sort of the apex of people walking around with white earbuds in their in their ears for the last decade, and you're taking that even to the next level of literally right. creating your own soundtrack <laughs> on the spot as you're yeah. as you're in that very public place. Yeah, yeah, very much mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I think another thing that's very unique about it is the time of day that you're working. Because mm -hmm. traditionally, mm -hmm. people tend to associate electronic music, especially techno or electronic things with rhythmic stuff, with being an evening thing, like a night kind of activity. So you're mm -hmm. sort of flipping that on its head and doing it the very first thing in the, in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would say, yeah, and that, that does a lot to kind of change the mindset, mm -hmm. I think, is I think you're right. You know, typically a lot of the music that I've ever done, and even when we were playing regularly, at, you mm -hmm. know, after college and stuff, it would be... You know, late at night, you know, either it was at shows, of course, shows start at 10 or 11 or 12, or if you're lucky, you know, if you're lucky, they get to start that early. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, and anything I do solo now because I have a family is not until midnight or three in the morning. And that creates a definite feel. It's at the end of the day. There's a lot of baggage from the end of the day. Um, sometimes I'm really tired, but yet I want to, like, got to do this thing. You know, I got to make some music right now. And that's my chance. Um, here with us doing it, uh, at the coffee shop in the morning, it's like this is now the first thing that we do, and it sets the tone and stage for our, for the whole day, at least for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's a completely different feel and different different mindset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to me, it's like uh, my brain's this etch a sketch where I at night I, I shake it up and I get to start making the new doodle for the day. And if I'm starting off with with Jason and making this doodle at the coffee shop, it's it's a blank slate and I can kind of just explore things more and I think that 7 a.m. really gives me that 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 ability to just kind of um, really 
relax and follow certain things in certain directions that I normally wouldn't do if it was like midnight or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's typical for a couple of friends to meet each other in the morning in the coffee shop for a conversation. And I know mm -hmm. you've described these sessions as kind of a conversation between the two of you. So how does that conversation unfold? What does that look like? Um, well, I think, you know, thinking back on this, uh, so one thing is, you know, I don't, 95% of the time, I don't know what he's going to be bringing with him musically and sound wise. And I don't typically know what I'm bringing typically until even the night before. So if he knows, then he's psychic. But so we don't know what each other's going to say. You know, much like a conversation when you start off with somebody, you don't generally know the direction it's going to go. You know, there's kind of like the hi, how you doing, kind of warm up. But then the conversation starts to take off and kind of goes and hopefully hits that happy space. Mm -hmm. I would say our music it works just like that you know we kind of got off like what are you saying well hi i'm over here and i'm doing this sort of thing You're like oh okay well i'm doing this sort of thing mm -hmm. and then slowly it just kind of builds up into this cohesive thing to where we're both kind of on the, the exact same page um and very much like that and you know and like a good conversation leaves you feeling really good afterwards mm -hmm. and so typically i'd say that's what most of our music making is like yeah and and we kind of start, stumbled upon this idea of this being a journal um, mm -hmm. after about a year or so of recording these things and, and we spliced them up and posted them on SoundCloud and kind of looking back at them and playing them in sequence we said whoa this is like a journal like you know we could kind of hear oh that's I remember when that was happening or you know that kind of thing and so it's kind of nostalgic almost yeah, sure you know go through all those old recordings right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah keeping a journal of those conversations yeah. and those experiences yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's excellent well thank mm -hmm. you for the time and talking about this today and I'm very excited to see the actual performance video thanks thank you
Bye-bye. 